Good evening boys and girls. Welcome to the Progressive. This is one of my favorite topics. You have arrived at this spot. I mean, you haven't got bored and switched off. You come to presentation number 16. Critical thinking. Critical thinking, first of all, many people misunderstand is criticism. It's not. Critical thinking is not criticism. There are plenty of people who will criticize everything, including themselves, but critical thinking isn't that. What is critical thinking? find out it's a very complex subject i have gathered definitions i made i do my own workshops on critical thinking on zoom okay it's a very complex topic it's not simple even though it seems simple like driving a bicycle but the thing is you have to exercise that muscle in the brain everybody has it the good news is every single one of you watching this has a capacity a potential to critically think but it has to be exercised just like how you learn to drive a bike or learn to swim critical thinking is an exercise but just go through this as detailed and at your own pace that's why i made a youtube video out of this whole thing you need to have a pace for this you need to pace it out slowly assimilate it in little little chunks everybody doesn't assimilate in big chunks there's something called as chunk size in NLP, but never mind all of that stuff. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead of myself. Just go through the critical thinking. Leave your comments if you don't understand. I'll try my best to respond to your comments. All right, take care. Now we begin the module of critical thinking. Now this is talked about a lot in a lot of circles. You can Google this and find, find all kinds of definitions. But what I have found after researching multiple places and knowing my knowledge of everything that I have researched personally and I have participated with, uh, with regard to human consciousness, with regard to human beings, with regard to how they think, how they feel, the subconscious patterns and all the yara yara rest of it, the critical thinking involves more than this logical or reasoning mind. It involves a lot of creativity. It involves a lot of open-mindedness. And we shall examine this aspect in this module. Of course, critical thinking, important points to say here are critical thinking is an exercise. It's a brain draining game. It's a being, uh, thinking, feeling game. And it's, it's a matter of training. It's just like any exercise that you do first, you're bad at it. And now as you, as you keep doing more and more, you get good at it. This is the beauty of the human being. They can create anything they like and become good at it. So critical thinking is once a similar, it's an exercise. So I have another critical thinking workshop where I conduct all of this. We can even conduct it online for all execs and everyone, whoever wishes to participate in this. Anyone 18 plus can really participate in it. It's not based on any bias that you need a certain experience of life to carry out critical thinking. Anyone 18 plus who has sufficient knowledge of uh, uh, current events, how to take care of uh, some logic and reasoning, reasoning thinking and that and such. So you can, anyone can 18 plus can with a reasonable education can engage in the critical thinking workshop. But here, let's first examine what are the five C's of critical thinking. So critical thinking, as I call them, the five C's, is the, con it's the art of conceptualizing, cognizing, comprehending, characterizing, and concluding. So these five C's, these five steps, uh, it can proceed in again a circular manner. Uh, you can can't obviously conclude before you have finished everything, but they are interlaced, they are overlapped. And this can be, this is a very detailed workshop in which these things will be explained. But here, we shall focus ourselves on defining this. What does it mean to conceptualize? What does it mean to cognize, comprehend, characterize and conclude? Uh, which form the 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 sphere of critical thinking. We have to examine the concepts first, and only if you understand the concepts properly, then you would be make the workshop would make any sense to you. Workshop is a little more detailed, obviously, than these slides. But yes, so you need to understand these as the beginning point. Yeah. 
So what is critical thinking? Let's see some definitions out there. Yes, we have put some um, out of the millions of definitions people make out. We have taken some selected definitions which work here for us. The U.S. National Council for Excellence in Critical Thinking defines critical thinking as, quote, intellectually disciplined process of actively skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to self, to belief and action. That's a lot of words right there. So you can reflect on that. It is also defined as a purposeful self-regulatory judgment which results in interpretation, analysis, evaluation and inference as well as explanation of evidential, conceptual, methodological, criteriological and contextual considerations upon which that judgment is based. Critical thinking is a way that of thinking that involves not only logical and rational thought but also cognitive acts such as imagination, conceptual creativity, intuition and insight. Critical thinking is a is at the root of what we call progressive thinking, thinking out of the box and should always result in a perspective that takes care of all of the above, the above three bullets. Hmm? So in our workshop, we will take care of all these basic definitions. Yes, I've combined all the considerations and developed a workshop based on these. And how do we do that? That's how the five C's have evolved. The five C's have evolved based on all these three bullets. So we'll take all of these into consideration. They're built in. So it should be thinking out of the box. It's spoken of a lot, you know, think out of the box, think out of the box. Well, what is the box first? You have to identify the box if you have to think out of it. So we will identify the box. And it's built into decision making and conclusions. Critical thinking brings about new ways of doing, being, working, producing, engaging and creating things or concepts or ideas that were never there before but are brought into reality by pure human critical thought. This is very important to understand. Very, very critical, very important to understand. So what critical thinking is not? This is important to identify also with regard to the previous slide. Critical thinking is not only logical thinking or rational thought, although they are a part of it. They're just one part of it. Critical thinking is not merely a result of based analysis. Let me try that again. I'm on my second coffee. Critical thinking is not merely a result-based analysis of getting a higher efficiency of work or a better economy of finance. These days people have agendas. The old energy or the civilization that's already dead and gone we are going into a new one now um, is not based on better economy or finance it's not uh, programming it's not uh, an exercise in deciding what should be the outcome should always be a better economy of finance or better efficiency at work these are very uh, post-industrial kind of thinking process it doesn't apply in the modern world it doesn't apply in the civilization that we are going to build again now. Critical thinking is not used to directly solve problems. It is a way to improve your thinking process itself. So critical thinking is to improve the thinking process. Once you improve your thinking process, it leads to a better decision making, which has many aspects and perspectives built into it. The many aspects and perspectives, well, the second slide, which you just saw, the previous one. Critical thinking process is not an abstract philosophy or a fixed type of thought. It is dynamic. It changes. It changes based on the people participating in the workshop. It changes based on the on the issue you are trying to create an, uh, an intellectual flux about. It's a moving flux. Okay. It's a dynamic thinking based on many angles and perspectives in which one has the choice to adopt into one's own life to suit any given situation or decision-making process. So once you engage in critical thinking process, it not only changes 
what you are out to achieve like your work or your profession or your business etc but it changes you as a person it changes your brain it changes your personal life the way you associate you start thinking in terms of new angles that you never thought of before wow i never thought of it this way oh wow i never felt this way oh wow this is a different kind of being altogether that's what critical thinking workshop aims to develop yes so we start examining the first one critical thinking and conceptualizing what does conceptualizing mean conceptualizing refers to the part of think critical thinking process is one component of the five c's where one forms an idea ideas are formed in the thinking process all creativity begins with the creation of an idea or a concept by a human humans have ideas all the time you have ideas all the time but how many times in a day do you have new ones are you just rotating the old ones or are you creating new ones how do you treat the new ones do you simply discard it as unusable or too abstract or do you give it a proper structured thinking process called critical thinking to derive benefit from your own conceptual mind you have a conceptual mind everyone does this is disregarded and disowned it <clears throat> new concepts are ideas are always formed within you where your mind is without any known names labels definitions conceptualizing means going beyond the known how many times have you felt yourself stuck in the same old same old simply because you're thinking in terms of rearranging existing ideas or using known names or labels of things or creations or objects or ideas a new idea means you are creating something which hasn't existed before which means you will be giving new definition new meaning new name new label to that idea you become the creator not the reproducer important to remember that your ability to form new concepts becomes more wider in scope and more powerful in depth if you are able to go beyond the ideas you were taught based upon your culture religious economical racial social background even education that you were born and raised within since all of those factors color your perception of what is and what is not possible in the sense of your right and wrong and good and bad and all your judgments fall into place limiting your ability to conceptualize so you have a bias and that's why we need to discuss the conceptualizing factors which play into which play a huge role in critical thinking so we'll spend more time in the further slides talking about this your ability to conceptualize individually or in a group depends to a great degree on your ability to be open mindedness we all talk of open minded very few people are and we'll examine the reasons why and how our open mindedness is affected i mean why can i form original thoughts so first one oh no so let's talk in detail about open mindedness because this is one of the very very important ways or parts of conceptualizing the first of the five c's so we'll examine all the biases here in the coming slides of what prevents you from being open minded okay these are the ones which stop you from being open minded you got to get rid of all these biases in order to be open minded think about this this requires deep pondering we can go over this again and again expertise assuming that an expert's opinion quote and quote is absolute or beyond questioning just because someone you meet or read about on the internet or in a book of any kind is an expert on the subject with a long list of qualifications doesn't imply they have the last word in it no one has the last word you assumed it to be so we assume commonly when experts are agreed that the opposite opinion cannot be certain when they are not agreed no opinion is certain when the expert think the evidence is insufficient we should suspend judgment this kind of approach frees our critical thinking mind from re-examining our own perceptions if you assume somebody is an expert you won't re-examine it you'll take it as an absolute truth that's a mistake that's the first mistake there is no expert who knows every last word of every subject that they have put their mind into next one fallibility that your ideas what is fallibility that your ideas beliefs assumptions could be wrong and must be correct and you must correct yourself later based on new evidence or criteria 
Your willingness to be wrong is the degree to which you are open-minded. How many times have you argued just to be right, just to defend yourself? That's an ego-based thinking that's very, very limited. You're just defending an idea which you have already learned from somewhere. Doesn't matter how firmly you believe in it, you're just creating significance around it. But that doesn't mean you're not, you're infallible. Be willing to be wrong, all right? If you're willing to be wrong, you're willing to be open-minded. Next one, gullibility is a state where you are ready to believe and accept any false claim or spurious ideas. It is a state where your critical receptiveness is replaced by blind acceptance by you, wishful thinking, greed, persuasive advertising, which goes on a lot, ignorance and sheer naivety all contribute to a situation where a person is easily taken advantage of. If you just buy into everything that is being sold, let it be an advertisement, let it be a clothing, let it be a fashion statement, let it be a science, let it be biology, let it be anything, let it be technology. How many of you go around buying new phones or new tablets just because it is fancy or advertised very heavily? How many times have you been victim of persuasive advertising, right? This is one of the aspects. Next one, labeling. Labeling refers to the attitude of working more often in acronyms, labels, definitions for the sake of being in a comfort zone of your prior understanding. All the acronyms that we keep trying to fish out. You try to label things, label people, label behaviors, label science, label the flower, label the animal. Labels don't mean anything in the absolute sense. They are just indicators of you pointing towards something. But if you try to label things and don't go beyond that, you can't be open-minded do you try to label things rather than examine the essence and meaning of things how much time do you spend pondering over a previously accepted definition and try to see it from a different point of view you go, you see a flower well you call it a flower for example but what do you know about it really if you discard the label flower what is it Say that what is its zone, when I ask you that question, you should go into the space of that nothingness. You don't know really what it is, other than the label. Knowledge, here refers to factual knowledge based on scientific evidence of provability, mathematical stability, and or empirical evidence of repeatability, right? How much of knowledge stops you from being open-minded? How much of what you accept or question is based around knowledge and and not opinions, bias or other aspects which are minus evidence of any kind. Okay, how much of knowledge, this is excessive knowledge is also harmful to your open-mindedness because you have accumulated so much of fact, factual knowledge and evidence and scientific reasoning etc etc and which is full of labels by the way, the first bullet. So you are basically all your further statements and analysis based on the previous one. Where is the question of having any new idea or conceptualizing anything? If you're just flooded with a lot of knowledge, you got to keep that aside. I'm not saying that you have to discard it. Keep that aside when you're doing critical thinking. Authority here refers to accepting ideas, opinions and evidence based on the fact that it is given to you by an authority figure. Maybe a supervisor or a boss or a teacher or a professor or a priest or a company policy or a regulation even parents teachers friends how much do you buy into these ideas blindly without your own questioning or the veracity of the same do you question authority if so what light do you question them bias knowledge actual evidence how would you individually handle authority in your life what's your relationship with authority figures you gotta think about that deeply Next one on um, open-mindedness. Now we get a little deeper. These are deeper concepts. Relativism. Over here, relativism refers to sensitive appreciation of pluralism with respect to methods, theories, perspectives and interpretations in an inquiry process. There can be many opinions and ideas presented. All of them may have some truth in it and could be applied to some degree to solve a problem. Question is, do you have this approach to your own ideas? Could your ideas as well as those you work with be discussed openly, allowing others to be right also? Removing the wrongness of things, that's the relativism. Its idea is relative, 
to the moment it is presented to the times it is relevant and not relevant so that's what you need to think about next one surprise he is referred to be to being ready to be welcomed ah, let me try that again surprise here refers to being ready to welcome an unexpected perhaps astonishing development or interpretation it means being prepared to recognize that a counter intuitive idea happens to be true how willing are you to be surprised by something something you did not expect beyond all your limited thinking are you open to be surprised by something you never even thought possible surprise the element of surprise uncertainty here refers to the fact that we live in a world which is constantly evolving deeply controversial issues disagreement among experts insufficient and conflicting information lack of confidence in institutions once admired and all newly emerging problems and crises speak of this fact of the world around us the absence of certainty requires a tolerance for ambiguity are you ready to be ambiguous vague you know you have a vague idea of something or somebody is being vague about something that opens a new box that opens shatters the existing box an ability and willingness to think critically and weigh alternatives in situations where decisions are problematic are you able to be stable inside in the face of uncertainty at work or situations in your life be it personal or professional next one veracity what does mean veracity refers to your attitude of honestly and passionately desiring to uncover truth you want to verify the truth for truth's sake adjusting one's own conviction based on evidence veracity is defeated by ulterior motives wishful thinking hasty judgment resistance to ideas and an a priori conviction how much of truth are you willing to explore without any hidden agenda let me try that again hidden agenda of yourself or trying to prove yourself right rather than finding out what the truth of the matter really is wonder here wonder refers to our innate sense of insatiable curiosity endless questioning imaginative speculation openness to new experiences and the sense that we will never quite exhaust our understanding and appreciation of things or people or life or the world around us do you retain a sense of wonder of the world about you personal and professional are you willing to be pleasantly surprised by your own discoveries everywhere in every situation next on the open mindedness list these are more deeper concepts xenophobia here refers to a deep seated fear or hatred of other cultures races with the result that the prejudice ignorance contempt and a feeling of racial superiority preventing people from noticing and appreciating what is of value in a different way of life or another culture and the race from considering what they might learn from other traditions everything is a tradition everything has been carried on by humans in certain parts of the world through their history through their ancestors each one is useful in certain way are you just blindly biased that is xenophobia do you feel superior simply because you were born in a particular race or religion do you have fixed opinions of other cultures countries or a race of people do you look for positive value in other traditions that could imp- uh imp- you could implement in your personal and professional lives or even in your country or society this will be a challenge especially in today's world where you'll be required to work with various countries as i have i worked with almost all cultures now from east to west around the world there have been 15 different countries so i have worked with all of them uh it would this will be a challenge okay so it would be wise for you not to be xenophobic but rather to examine other races and cultures openly and work with them in harmony zealotry what is zealotry zealotry here refers to the unquestioned fanaticism insisted upon by either an individual superior even a company or an institution or even governments this is the kind of attitude that denies you an autonomy of work or independence of thinking which is your inherent right you're born this way are you watchful if any person in your life or workplace is over zealous about his or her work methods being fanatical is fanaticism and overriding all your opinions you have to do it this way because this is the perfect way to do things this is zealotry unquestioned fanaticism yes 
Okay, so as you can see, conceptualizing means the process of independent analysis in the creative search for new ideas and solutions, which takes as a starting point that none of the accepted constraints of quote unquote today's reality need necessarily to apply or to shape the future. Thus, it does not accept received wisdom or the status quo or inertia as necessary determinants of every bit of the future. Do you see how much of that kind of process requires you to be open-minded on just about everything you have known or knowledge, known knowledge even, or you have built upon your current set of opinions, biases and belief structure. Conceptual thinking requires an openness to new ways of seeing the world and willingness to explore. One goes into a zone of the unknown. New ideas cannot really be built upon old facts or evidences of history or even evidences of science because even science is evolving or even mathematics because even mathematics is evolving constantly but rather manufactured from our own intuitive and reasoning capabilities to what could be possible. One goes into a possibility thinking rather than a probable thinking mode. It requires you to form a habit of going into conceptual mode of thinking each day and hour in order for you to be able to use it efficiently and effectively as an individual, as a professional. To be truly content, to feel success in yourself, not by someone else's endorsement of it or promotions or a raise in your salary, but rather from your own being. To feel it and embody it in such a way that you give new meaning to your own life every single day, every single hour even. So now we go into the next C, cognizing. What does it mean to cognize? To cognize means to become aware of, to take notice of. Simply as this may sound, most of us try to give a response to an answer or to take action without cognizing what is before us. How much time do you spend being aware of yourself or your surroundings? How much time in a day do you sp spend being cognizant of your sensory inputs around you? Cognition is usually at many levels and differs from one person to another. At a personal level of cognition, one may be very cognizant of another, very less of themselves, or vice versa. Some may be very cognizant of themselves and less of the other. Cognition at the self level may include several levels, mental where you are engaged with your constant stream of thoughts, one following the other, or just rambling thoughts. Emotional, the thoughts leading to certain emotions, and you may lock onto those emotions which in turn fuel further thoughts and trigger similar emotions, etc. Or it may be physical, where you are conscious of your dress, your bodily awareness, your awareness of your surroundings with respect to you. Being aware of how different physicality of others is from your, your own body, etc. Then there is an aspect of metacognition. What does it mean by metacognition? This is cognition about your cognition. What are your thoughts about your thoughts? What do you think about the way you think? What do you look for in certain things or focus on certain observations or conclude in a certain way? Or why do you think others have patterns like that? Not perhaps similar, but patterns nevertheless. These come in the area of subconscious patterns. And this is again being in apps now. And I do it personally also. If you want to take a quicker one, I have the Excel sheets and all of that. Of that right. Okay. So another aspect, your ability for clear cognition at any moment is related to your mental, physical, emotional health. Many are not able to focus and become present at work when even when awake simply because of some vitamin deficiency, the physical ability, yes, or hormonal imbalance in the body. This is more common in a in many countries, even countries like India, where predominant vegetarian diet, which is almost absence of vitamin B complex, God knows how many times I've told this to Indians, it's vital for health and central nervous, of central nervous system. You will find cognition more clear and not blur if your brain is working at a higher efficiency. Cognition is not knowledge of something, it's not an intellectual exercise. One does not study something to have cognition. Cognition is something you become. It's a way of functioning and being. One becomes it. Therefore, it requires all parts of you as a human, focused and flowing like we observed in previous podcasts, as well as a subconscious mind, and yet being present with all of them. Within the present moment, cognition is always in the present moment. Cognition is not something you have or you don't. It's not black and white. Everyone has cognition to some degree. If you develop more of it, you will be more present. Exercises like yoga, breath, awareness, tai chi, qigong, etc. help you become 
access more of your own cognitive capabilities the more present you are at any moment the more clear you will be coming to cognize with ease clear cognition is the key component to enabling all further aspects of critical thinking process unless one is present and very aware one is not able to fully engage or have enough sound critical thinking thought process clear cognition provides a space space for new thought to emerge new thinking acting on something you haven't really done before clear cognition enables you to have access to all thoughts and awareness being presented within you to have a deliberate action with them that is to say thinking deliberately rather than automatically you have for your thoughts trigger emotions right every thought you have creates an emotion inside you and your emotion creates another thought so it's a cyclical process and the more you let thoughts dictate the emotions all for the emotional content dictate further thinking you run out of control of yourself from the present moment how much can you ignore your own thoughts while in a conversation with someone a switch off again consciously later for you for example this kind of ability of dynamic presence can be cultivated by you like i said it's an exercise all of this is an exercise clear cognition enables you to have more access to all of your knowledge past present as well as your memory in such a way that they become useful to you in the present moment how many times do you find yourself wondering why you did not think of such and such in that moment when you were conversing with the other person how many times have you regretted not remembering something at the right time when you needed it clear cognition enables you to listen often to your own intuition one of the most powerful tools of you being present dynamic or from one moment to another intuition is very powerful intuition goes beyond reasoning and logic and comes from moment to moment if you had only the presence and awareness to listen to your intuition you would have taken action much more intelligently this we have discussed before also about the intuition in other podcasts cognize while reading or listening to someone why are they saying what they are saying what made them say that why is the author saying such and such if you are reading a book always go beyond what is said in terms of knowledge information and always question the intent of the person writing it and speaking it this way you will begin to recognize and apply your own knowledge of their subconscious patterns while you are engaged in a book or conversation cognize your own patterns of evaluation why you lean on certain observations your preferences and the way you understand things this will enable you to sharpen your own understanding of your own functioning you function in a certain way it is not per- permanently fixed you keep changing through age you can change it to anything any time you want to but you will be able to have the choice of change only if you are aware of it in the first place practice some sort of meditation on a regular basis if nothing appears to you just sit in silence and focus on your breathing it quickly brings you to the present moment from the chaos of your thinking and emotions you can do this in any time any place work home restaurant cafe anywhere just awareness of all your surroundings and your five senses is meditation in itself you can be walking talking driving meditation it doesn't have to just be sitting in one place with eyes closed practice being emotional with yourself by yourself it is the essence of your being humans live for laughter joy creation expansion engagement with one another and communion practice being happy with who you are no matter what anyone has ever told you always avoid hurting yourself by yourself avoid being critical or being self judgmental there is nothing inherently wrong or lacking with you ever no one has this reality figured out completely we each are evolving and creating as we go spend time feeling good with you by yourself laugh dance cry move your body this will soar your self esteem and will enable you to be very sharply cognitive as and when required walk in open streets parks open spaces regularly all forms of exercise walking is the best since the human body is designed to walk don't run jog or pump iron in the gym that's rubbish be present with all those around observe all those people people around the trees the shops the streets the features without judgment just observe everything you're engaging with everything around you increasing your sense of awareness yes now let's talk about the next c comprehending to comprehend means to understand and not understand in a linear way but have a circular understanding of what is being said or read 
what do you mean by that a circular understanding takes all aspects of what is being said the human element mental physical emotional the technical element of if at all any design construction etc the financial or the economic element logistic element etc lots of elements to it all aspects pertaining to the subject constitute comprehension understanding on the other hand is just having understood the meaning of one line or set of lines the grammar the syntax the pedantics of it it does not make the complete meaning out of it the der derivation of meaning comes from comprehending comprehension must involve the process of inductive and deductive thinking process that means inductive thinking involves drawing on many different aspects concepts or opinions to come to a larger conclusion in, that is to say inductive thinking says sees how small things fit into a larger picture deductive thinking is just the reverse it involves addressing the known first and it attempt to discover more information about why the known was what it is understanding the cause and effects both of these are needed to get a circular view of the subject to be addressed comprehension must also involve examination and explanation of evidential information with respect to the criteria as well as the context one of the crucial aspects of critical thinking is coming to conclusions but with a circular understanding called comprehension one must be able to examine that is to say analyze as well as explain reason out of gathered evidence data or information with a specific criteria what one needs to examine and what for in a specific context personal social institution motive ethical implications etc so it's a very complex process of comprehending next characterizing characterizing is a process of giving description giving a detailed picture the characteristics of observation facts information analysis and reasoning after you have comprehended the information fully be able to put down the descriptions of your task your job you know piece of paper and update it regularly and examine it what it is to you what it is you do and why characterization gives words meanings ideas reasons a full meaning explains the entire picture of why you have conceptualized and cognized and comprehended of what you have sorry this does not have to be necessarily extensive or very detailed but just enough to capture enough necessary points that need to be present for a full justification of the next step forming your conclusions about a subject or a topic one of the key elements of characterization is to factor in the human element after all every component of your description is affecting another human being somewhere somehow someone is going to do a part of the task someone needs to information someone needs to work on the product you're working on someone benefits from the each piece the more you can build human element in your work even if it's very technical financial or design aspects the more you have comprehended the full depth and picture of what you're doing and why and how best it can be accomplished how much a human being human element do you think of or feel of in your daily work how much do you feel a part of the whole or are you just working in isolation important things to consider while characterizing characterizing helps immensely in giving you a picture a full picture of your a full view of your tasks your life goals your pursuits your career goals what you like in life in a clear description use this aspect in all areas of your life frequently to get good at it if you can describe what you in, do in words write it down read it to yourself you'll know what you want to keep doing or doing it or those reasons that really makes heart sense to you you know you feel it <laughs> Are you working blindly for a career or salary raises that won't work you have to characterize it you have to feel what you're doing you're a human being you're an emotional creature give character to your work give emotions give adjectives easy complicated lengthy etc give the human element to all you do and all you are analyzing based on evidence you have at hand the more you do this the more you feel your work at the same time give objective descriptions to what you do what is being accomplished what is required here and why and how it fits into the team or department or company's objective this will give two different views and make a complete characterization of your daily tasks always write it down not imagine it think about it write it down you can do that with your notes app a smartphone or a tablet always make notes and then add more characterization to it characterization should answer all four parts of any task the why the how the what the where fully this is the language of descriptiveness you need to adopt again and again write everything down 
This is the process of giving character to purpose and objectives that you have buried inside you. Get very good at adding more and more reasons, justifications, facts, evidences, and examine them again as part of being open-minded. How would you go about doing what you are doing? What are the aspects you need to consider, etc. Again, this is an exercise. Remember, characterization is a process of description. As detailed as you can describe your analyses, information, various points of view, the better the sense develops in you. It's a continuously evolving process. Now we come to the last part of the five C's, concluding. Conclusion is a process of reaching a decision or a summary based upon all further actions will be based. The whole purpose of critical thinking leads towards as to arrive at this final point. But the quality of your decision or conclusions reached by the process of critical thinking is always best rather than pure logical reasoning. Conclusion or conclusions, it can be a number of them, can be result as reached as a result of critical thinking may not be a singular one. There can be a number of conclusions. It's always good to have the more conclusions, by the way. A good critical thinking process usually provides a number of conclusions. In there are a number of factors that have gone into decisions arrived that are complex and manifold. Conclusions should be such that they give various paths with justification of why and how it will lead forward rather than absolute correctness of it in terms of right and wrong, good and bad. Those are judgments, those are not conclusions. A good set of conclusions should evaluate in terms of pros and cons of every path selected and again based on various other dimensions which we have discussed, other four C's and what they would lead to. Arriving at conclusions is not about getting it right or wrong but rather to assist in the totality of the decision-making process. The decision is selected is of a better quality using critical thinking process. Always, this is the advantage of critical thinking process and it's never an absolute correctness for any matter. It is, it is about arriving at the best possible outcome. This is the key word here, best possible outcome. Taking all factors into consideration in the moment. What are the good aspects of conclusion? Let's examine that. A good set of conclusions have facts, opinions, truths, empirical data, as well as logical reasoning and extrapolation built into it. The decision making is helped by conclusions. Only if it is extrapolated, that is to say, one can see the paths available and what they lead to. It's to see further paths and further evolution. If decision making is taken, uh, sorry, decision is taken using particular path. The process of concluding typically tends to move towards logical reasoning, facts, evidence and less and less towards humanism. That is, the human factors approach, preferences and choices are left out. This is, this, should, this is very wrong. This is an erroneous approach. This is what has led to disasters in human civilizations which have gone before us. They ignore the human factor. Often leads to decisions on half-truths. Remember, humans are emotional beings and often base their decisions on preferences and choices rather than logic. You choose chocolate not because it is better than vanilla, it's just because you like chocolate. That factor has to be factored in. This is humanism. So a good set of conclusions always should factor the humanism element. A set of conclusions should be complete in themselves. That is to say, it should not be retracing steps backward and running through various evaluations once again. All arguments, logic, facts and humanism should always be there in every possible conclusion, enabling motion forward, you are moving forward and not in a backward way. A good set of conclusions should always be doable, that is to say, practical in their application, not requiring a complete maker of existing policies and procedures or a complete diversion but use the existing knowledge also. There's nothing wrong with existing knowledge. It just has to be re-examined in critical thinking. So in critical thinking, what we predominantly do is re-examination, putting all the biases aside and yet opening a new box. This is how you open a new box. You have to keep the old box aside and then only you can step outside the box and create the new box of thinking. That's the main purpose of critical thinking. So in summary, critical thought process of an individual is to a large extent influenced by subconscious patterns. Again, you can, the subconscious patterns play a very key role. It's all very easy to speak of here, but one must learn about oneself first. It always begins from self and goes outward. Then they become more sharper in critical thought. So I make, I'm making an app right now called the self-image. 
uh, it's a set of questionnaires which will help you determine what your self image is i'm not talking with respect to how good you are or how bad you are it's it's an image of you or what you really look like how you function what are your emotional depth what is your thought depth what are your thinking styles learning styles etc etc there's a lot of questions there it's a questionnaire you can take it in personally i already have the excel sheet or you can await the app which will come in android and apple stores critical thinking is crucial to the new modes of thought evolving new paradigms in design in management planning execution in every field of science biology everything critical thinking as is taught in schools business schools and research now is very limited in scope and reach and needs reforming lacks evaluation of what an individual bent of mind and emotions are that's the self image test so critical thinking is learned more on interactions exercises role plays group discussions etc with facilitators present now i facilitate this critical thinking workshop so workshop environment where play and engagement with one's brain are made new connections are made in your own brain new way of thinking this is an entirely different kind of training in itself and it can be applied anywhere it's very broad in its reach and will change you as a person personally and professionally critical thinking helps one make a decision evaluate previously taken and choose new paths based on wider criteria more than just logical reasoning the decisions made in critical thinking process enables one individual to make a personal one professional one business one creativity academic etc it opens a new awareness within you this is a very very multi dimensional approach to your own thinking okay then <laughs>